hold it, Henry? Oh, no. You don't want to hold it? Are you afraid of it? Yeah. Really? This is so nice. So the last few months I've been uh, thoroughly enjoying the snowy hibernation. Uh, Tabitha took the opposite route and she's been baking a lot and obsessively planning this year's projects. Our biggest project this year is going to be our perimeter fencing. Um, we'd like to get a couple feeder steers this year if we can and we need to get the property fenced in. So, if we can get the perimeter fencing done, then we can at least get the cows out on it um, for the whole year. And then we can slowly work on dividing up our pastures for hopefully later this fall or for the next year. So that's what we're gonna be working on. Um, we'll be fencing down, we'll be using hot wire instead of this field fence. Um, hot wire is a lot cheaper and we can get it all done, hopefully in one season pretty quickly. Um, as soon as spring starts up, I'd like to get them out on grass so we're not having to feed out hay for so long. Um, but that's our goal. Our goal with the cows. Um, the cows will actually get bred this year. Uh, I think probably in June or July for spring calves. And then we'll have a milk cow next spring, which will be super exciting. Uh, so we've got some halter breaking to do with Sunny. She's, she's friendly. She's just a little wild. Um, so we're gonna work on that this year. And then Bonnie will get bred too. And then we'll have some calves next year to raise up for meat too. This year has been a lot of uh, learning of what we can and can't do on the property. Uh, we planted this orchard. Uh, quickly found out that the holes fill with water. Uh, there's way too much moisture in the ground here, so they're kind of drowning. Um, we're going to transplant these up back behind the garage right here. And uh, instead, we're gonna use this for the chicken run. Uh, we're really ramping up the uh, production this year. We're gonna be going to the farmer's markets. So we're gonna do about 200 chickens this year, where last year we did 57. Um, so we've got more chicken tractors built and we're gonna be using this whole area for that run and setting up a better uh, processing situation area. So like Brady said, the chickens are going to be where the orchard is now. Um, that eventually is going to be pasture too. And so that kind of downsizes our yard area quite a bit. Um, so what we're going to do is do some really intensive uh, planting this year for our garden. And our garden's down here kind of at the bottom of a little slope in our yard. Um, and the problem is it's super wet. It's super saturated. Um, I think that was a lot of my issue last year besides just not having enough like compost and um, higher nitrogen for the plants. So this year we're going to keep it there, but we're going to use raised beds instead um, and see if we have better success. So we'll do the raised beds in the garden. We're going to bring the garden forward in the yard, um, probably up to like this point. Um, and then use this whole area for the garden and do a lot more beds. Um, and then I think we'll also move like our raspberries and blackberries that we had planted out in the orchard. We're going to move them up here into the garden too. Um, I'm hoping that means we'll have better success. It seems like the asparagus and strawberries did really good out there last year. So we're just going to leave them how they are and see how they do. But as far as like actual vegetables, tomatoes and potatoes and peppers and cucumbers and all that stuff we're gonna do in raised beds this year and hopefully have 
have an easier time if they're not sitting in the soil getting saturated. So across the road from the house we have our garage and then we had done all these raised beds um, this last summer for dahlias. And we're gonna kind of expand this area. So now we can kind of see back here. During the summer, this was all super thick brush. Um, but we, our property line is that power line. And so we're gonna mow all of this down. Um, and then we're gonna take down like the old apple tree that's dead and kind of mow all of that flat. And we're gonna add quite a few more beds. Um, I might try to do some in-ground beds with the rototiller and start some different flowers that way instead of having to do so many raised beds up here. Um, it's gonna kind of depend on the soil. Uh, the one thing we did do is planted quite a few peonies. I think there's like 30 something peonies. Are you okay? Um, I planted about 36, I think, peonies up above the raised beds. So I'm excited to see what those do this spring. Um, you're okay, buddy. They take a couple years to really start producing pretty good, but I'm hoping we can get a couple flowers off of each one this year. The other thing is that I'm gonna try to get as many flowers as I can growing this year. Kind of do like a test market. We're doing the farmer's markets. I'm hoping we can get into uh, Green's farmer's market, maybe Bainbridge or Oxford. Um, they're all kind of on different days and kind of see what we can get sold. But if I'd like to do some cut flowers and maybe start some subscriptions the following year. Um, so we're gonna see what we can get growing up here, get our beds built up um, and just see how it does. And then see if we have a customer base for it, basically. Um, I've got all my dahlias still stored down in the basement. They're looking really good. Um, I'll be pulling those out probably in the next month to get them started. And then I've got ranunculus and anemones going in these beds before the dahlias. So those are going to get started next week too. Otherwise I've been um, winter sowing in milk jugs, um, some perennial flowers like uh, milkweed and echinacea and stuff. Um, Cause I'd really like to have like a native pollinator garden too. Um, and eventually get like a greenhouse and kind of have it. Like you want your property to both be useful and try to make a profit off of it if you can but also at the same time i want some kind of like beauty and something that i can enjoy so i'd like to have a greenhouse with a big pollinator garden around it too um, so that's part of our plans this year um, but up here on the hillside walk. up here kind of behind the garage we have this like open flat area and we're gonna kind of clear some of the hillside behind it um, and move our orchard trees up here. So we've got peaches, pears, I think we have plums, and then we have apple trees. Um, so we have eight total. As long as they start coming back pretty decent this spring, we're gonna move them up here. It doesn't get nearly as wet, the ground's not nearly as saturated, and um, I think they'll have a better chance of survival. I just think down where they're at, the roots are gonna rot really easy. Um, and so I'd like to move them up here. Plus they take up such like good property that we could be using for grazing. And I'd rather have it for the cows to cut back on hay. So if we can keep them up here, kind of out of the way, like there's not a whole lot of things we can do with this space up here. Um, this is where I'd rather have them. We're also gonna be uh, moving the chickens out of their coop and we're gonna be building a mobile chicken coop so that they can be uh, moved and grazed out in our acreage and then we're going to use the area that they're occupying right now for a big brooder setup we've got chicks ordered and they're going to come sequentially so that when one batch is ready to be processed the next batch is ready to be moved out to the chicken tractors we've also ordered our pigs uh, they'll be starting to come next month we've got we're tripling the amount we did last year, so six total. Uh, we've got USDA butchers lined up so that we can sell at the market. It's not very good light in this kitchen or an easy way to set up this camera, but um, we're making bread today. But I wanted to chat about um, one of the thing, things I think is kind of a concern with raising your own meat is a lot of people think it might get wasted and then the animals' lives were kind of for nothing. Um, I was a little concerned 
with what we were gonna do with all the pork and the chicken we had this year. Um, I cook, but I don't cook as much. Um, but since we moved out here, we're not close to any sort of convenient food. Um, so we really take in this winter to learn to cook from scratch a lot, um, learn what to do with all those cuts of meat. Um, we've gone through most all of it and it's the beginning of February. So um, I think we've got about seven chickens left out of 57 and we've got um, maybe an eighth of the pork left, uh, mostly hams and roasts and um, the bacon. I got the bacon um, just fresh cut, not smoked, which was a mistake um, because I don't know what to do with it a lot. So we've been figuring out different recipes for that, but um, it's been really great just learning how to cook from scratch a lot of things. We've even taken to making bread from scratch, um, trying out sourdough and stuff like that. But really getting to learn what to do with all those cuts of pork, um, learning what to do with all the chicken, cooking it in a bunch of different ways. Um, it's been really nice, especially it seems to have really cut down on our grocery costs. Um, we're not barely ever buying any meat. Um, most all the meat that we are eating right now is just from our own animals. Um, so I'm really, really excited for this year. I'm really excited to share in our community um, all of our eggs. Our chickens have been laying like crazy. They are still laying really well, even in February, even with the cold temperatures. Um, but like Brady was saying earlier, we just, there's not a whole lot going on during the winter. You know, it's cold, it's snowing, it's off and on, you know, freezing and warming up and everything's muddy and um, there's just not a lot of like working on big projects. So we haven't recorded much this winter. Um, the kids have been playing out in the snow. We've just been cooking and baking and um, we're really excited to get going this year. Get going on all those projects. We have lots of plans. Um, I think, one of the big things will be just ramping up what we're doing, being able to sell to the community. Uh, we've got our business license done. I think we'll share in an upcoming video um, what we chose for our farm name. It won't be backseat farming. Um, we just wanted a business name that we could use for, you know, uh, business cards and put a sign out by the road and stuff like that. So um, I think. We got that stuff all done and then we just gotta work on like all the taxes and stuff but we're really excited we are gonna be selling chicken eggs um, we're ordering more layers for the spring we've got 200 chickens on order they start in April so we'll get 50 a month for four months um, and then that way we can kind of um, kind of do one batch at a time. I don't want to overwhelm us too much, especially since like the kids are bigger this year, which is awesome. Eldridge is, you know, 18 months old and more independent and walking around. And um, I'm excited that they can just go play and not have to need so much supervision this year. Um, so things will be easier to get done. Since we won't have quite so much neediness from the kids, um, we're gonna do 50, 50 a month, which seems pretty good. So the first batch will get processed while the second batch is about three weeks old and they'll move into their chicken tractor. And so it'll be a nice rotation of the chickens. Um, and then if by July we're having a fairly easy time selling um, the chickens, then we can order more um, and still have time to process more for the season. Or if you know we still have some left, then we know exactly how much we can order for ourselves um, to get through the winter time. So we'll have our own chickens for our own family needs. And then um, same with the pigs, we're gonna start with pigs next month. Um, we're gonna do three batches and so we'll have two, two and two. Um, I don't wanna get too many pigs, they're kind of overwhelming. Um, and so we'll start with six pigs this year, sell by the retail cut and then um, we'll kind of, you know, whatever's left is what we'll have for ourselves. And then of course we'll have beef somewhere down the road in a couple years. So anyways, that's just what I want to chat about. Um, I'm really excited. Spring feels like it's almost here. It's super bright outside and uh, it's giving me a little bit of spring fever. So anyways, that's it. Just lots of cooking, lots of baking, eating way too much food. Mm -hmm.